So my previous video where I talked about network theory and trade, and how there's infinite money in the economy, and how redistribution is important, and maybe decommodifies the stuff. This is a follow-up video to that that explains it more in depth, the more precise terms, but you st still do not need to know any math, I promise, or, or almost any, and I'll try to explain it as simply as possible. And I also bring in a little bit of new stuff. Point one is that if we're redistributing to make the system safer, you need to redistribute to the bottom, not to the top. If we redistribute to the top, we could exaggerate the problem. If in the previous video, you had those two people that were trading already mostly, you had the third person excluded, if we give those two people more money, they'll just trade maybe faster back and forth, and that might be sucking away money from the poor. So we have to make sure the system helps the bottom the most, not the top. The second part is that we have to make sure the money is not gobbled up too fast in any situation. The reason why this is important is it takes some time to make sure we make a good decision. If, we, if I have to spend money immediately to buy food, I might not buy the healthiest food or the best food. If I have to make a medical decision in less than 10 seconds, I am not going to make the best decision. If I have money that I can save up, I can buy better a uh, better house, I can afford better medical treatment, I can buy a better car. The less I have to worry about immediate concern, the better. So that means we don't only need, it's not only about speed, like I made it sound before. We also need a little buffer where people have more than enough money or they have the feeling that they will get the money. It may not be they have more than enough money, but they might be that they know they can spend the money now because the next paycheck is coming around. And they know that paycheck is guaranteed. And that paycheck also has to be guaranteed. They can't go in debt. Also, we have to make sure there's a return on investment. We can't just spend the money and have it just go into making a giant pillow that no one sees or the famous or little onion skit where they just put money in the giant hole. The money has to go to the community and somehow improve their lives, unless, otherwise it's wasteful. Spending money in my system is good, even an efficient one, if it helps people. Giving people healthcare is always good, even if it's not efficient. However, if we make the system more efficient, there is a bad thing, and by efficient I mean we spend less money to do more. So that means if I have $100 and I can give you the same health care for $20 that previously cost $80, that means I have $80 to spend on other things, such as housing, such as more health care. If done right, that means I can improve the quality, but it also means I can spread out the money more. A big thing about this whole thing is that I'm talking about spreading out the money that everyone participates. So if I spend the money $20 on Healthcare, that money goes to healthcare. Work. I spend now I have eighty dollars. I spend the next twenty dollars on give, making so everyone has a house. Some of that money goes to construction workers, and twenty dollars here and there. So it is important to look at minimizing costs, but not for the same reason as some people make it out to be that being fiscal so other people have enough money. It's about not minimizing costs for the rich, but making so the poor people. And people at the bottom have more money that they can spread out, or the government can spread out more money in more ways. That is where efficiency is good. Efficiency also means that probably the system works better and it's easier to understand. If uh, if you have a very convoluted healthcare system, it's likely not to be most effective because there's too many steps and you can't figure out what's going on, where the money's spent, or it might not be fast to react. So efficiency is still good. I'm not saying we just throw money at every single problem, but throwing money can be better than throwing no money if as long as we get the money back fast enough, which when we raise the amount of money the poor people make, we can have we can actually tax the whole economy more and in fact make more money. That's the return on investment I'm talking about. People get better education, they have higher paying jobs, and that means we can tax them more. There will be no limit as long as we can make sure that there is a, such a return on investment. The third one is that an unbalanced system is unstable. And this is another big criticism of the modern day economy is that if you have, if most of the money is going through the hands of a very wealthy few, let's say there's 
take the system where there's only two people doing almost all the trading, and there's a third person excluded. If one of those top two people die, the whole economy gets destroyed. Now, it's not that ridiculous in the real world, but the more people at the top, the more vulnerable a slight change to the top will happen, and it'll just destroy the whole system. But also, the faster the top is compared to the bottom, the more think that something at the top could get exaggerated really quickly. Like, let's say I trade super fast, but then I decide to trade in an odd thing or do something really weird. Then everyone else is, then my flaw can get exaggerated and blown up constantly at such a top level that affect the bottom level. Before the bottom level people can correct, people at the bottom of the economy can correct the top level mistake. My mistakes are just happening too fast for the people to keep up and correct them. And all this makes for a very unstable economic system that other people cannot predict. And this unstable economic system hurts mainly people that have less security, aka the people on the bottom. Um, another one is that people talk about these systems and how they promote competition, which is like evolution. And I have debunked that in a whole separate video about evolution with more examples that you should watch. But competition and trade does not promote survival of the fittest or the best companies. It can actually do the exact opposite in many cases. In most cases in nature, it doesn't, it's more just random chance. For how bulk spending can be good, I recommend you look up my video about insurance and other things. So yes, there are caveats to what I'm saying and it needs to be implemented well. Another big caveat to what I say is, do you trust the government or who do you trust in power to do all these distribution and you need a good system that's not corrupt. So you need, most important, moral pe uh, people that are maybe not the moral people, but people that act in the favor of the people. So there are a bunch of caveats to what I'm saying, but it's an important thing to understand, I believe. Thank you very much, and I hope this was some interesting talk. Please subscribe and like the videos, it really helps out. Please tell the people about these videos, and um, please leave a comment behind if you really enjoyed it. I hope I'm trying out the new microphone, I hope it works well. Thank you.